bid to the NCAA tournament on the line. It's Valparaiso and Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, or the school likes to call themselves simply IUPUI. And after Josh Mullins, three, they are up 54 52. 23 seconds left. Ratiz Graf steps up, hits a three, so he brings his team within two. He had 21 points, ensuing possession. Jags inbound. Valpo coming up with a loose ball. There it is. Stalin Ortiz misses the three, but Graf. Grass is there for the putback. We are tied at 64. Valpo out-rebounded IUPUI 40 to 27. Jags possession. Matt Crenshaw. Why don't you just go ahead and be the hero? Knock it down with one second left. Jags up to very clutch. Valpo, can you answer in one second? That's it. The Jaguars are going to the NCAA tournament. Pandemonium. <laughs> Coach Ron Hunter ecstatic. By far the best reaction to the championship so far. 66-64, Jags win. Play Bidness, Sunbelt Conference, Middle Tennessee State, Western Kentucky. First half, Middle Tennessee up nine. John Humphrey, hello, let's make it 11, getting Frisbees off the roof. Still in the first, Western Kentucky down three. Patrick Sparks, he had 12, we're 23 all at the half. More Sparks this time, gonna give it up to his buddy, Mike Wells. And the toppers are on top by 10. Still in the second, because after you start the second, that's usually how he keeps it. Sparks had five steals. Wells, 18 points, 10 boards. Western Kentucky up 12, and going to the NCAA tournament, 64-52 is your final from the home floor. UW-Milwaukee head coach Bruce Pearl talking to fans before the game, then he pumps up his own team against Butler. Do you think anybody in this country's heard about UW-Milwaukee? There's not a soul that heard about UW-Milwaukee basketball. It's all about Butler basketball or Crane or the team. Let's go out and show the nation what UW-Milwaukee got to go. <laughs> Horizon Championship. You know what I'm saying? Clay Tucker, 23 points for him. UW Milwaukee starts off on a 14 zip run. Tucker partially blocks the shot. We go in transition. The ball back to Tucker for the finish. Tucker, 18 of his 23 in the first half. And then second half, Tucker driving two handed jam. A 69 52 final for Wisconsin Milwaukee. Congratulations with your first ever tournament bid. So that's a dozen in and 53 still to come. IUPUI's first ever bid, avenging a loss to Valpo a year ago. Western Kentucky repeats in the Sun Belt. Nice to play on the home playground. And UW Milwaukee also in the NCAA field for the first time. Camp Penn finishing up its regular season against Princeton. Late first half. David Klatsky beats the buzzer for three. Then second half, we're tied at 49. More Klatsky and more drama. David Klatsky, wrong alley oop for Chubb. Boy, he almost made the basket. Actually, at Persia, thought it was good, and, and it wasn't good. Referees aren't sure. That did not go in. Huh. I'm not sure. Oh, oh yeah, it went in. Klatsky, definitely good. Six points for them, very exciting. Penn wins 74-67, finishes 14-0 in the Ivy League. Perfect record. First half, UConn down to Jessica Moore. No. Chris Juline grabbing the board. Now keep an eye on how Villanova controls the tempo. Juline getting instruction from her coach, Harry Peretta. There's no 10-second rule in women's hoops and a 30-second shot clock. What does this all mean? Well, Villanova will start running their offense with only 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Yep, it's just like they planned it. It's their strategy. They like to do this. That's why they have 24 victories. And finally, with three seconds left, for three, it's good by Jolene, who had 18 points. Time winding down, first half, Ann Struther. Good look, but it doesn't fall, and neither does the rebound. UConn was down 20 to 17 at the break. First time in 87 games, UConn was down at the half. Second half, the Huskies come out strong, right? We all expected that. Diana Taurasi to Jessica Moore, who had 13 points to tie the game. Later in the second half, Barbara Turner to Tarasi. She also had 13. UConn up nine with nine to go. But here comes Villanova. Nicole Druckett Miller. She was four or five from the field in the second half. Then Courtney Mix, the daughter of former Sixer Steve Mix. And then Druckett Miller for three. An eight nothing run. That's when Nova knew UConn could be had. Mix. 11-0 run, Nova up two, and after two free throws, Jolene, the Big East leading scorer. 15-0 run for Villanova. Drunken Miller again for three, an 18-2 run, Villanova up seven. Now, down five is UConn. Diana Taurasi at the line. 
It's gonna end up to Ann Strother, who hits the J, but the Husky shot just 17 of 56 from the field in this game. 18 seconds to go, Huskies down four. Jawasi finds Moore all alone. Yukon down two. And then Trish Juleen at the line, putting Nova up four. Yukon running down the floor, needing a big bucket. Tarasi will get it in her hands. That's where the Huskies wanted it. For three, no. And then Moore will travel with a rebound. Nova does it. The Huskies' 70-game win streak is over. Their nine-year Big East championship run is over. Villanova coach Harry Peretta, what do you have to say? These kids are unbelievable. What they do, how they play hard, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I mean, you know, we're outmatched a lot of positions, and they just got it, and they just play hard. That's all they do is keep trying. I'm so happy for them. I'm just happy for them. I'm going to start from, start from scratch now. Um, last couple of weeks haven't been all that well, and I think, I think today it caught up with us. So I just going to have to regroup and go from there. Now, overall, Gino Oriema, the coach of the Huskies, took the loss well, except uh, with one particular reporter. Well, we can go one of two ways. You know, we can find out that you know, this loss just absolutely devastates them, and you know, we lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament, or we go back and kind of look in the mirror and say. Not supposed to win every game. What are you going to do to make sure that doesn't happen? You know, you ask a lot of a lot of questions that really piss me off, and you're too young to ask those kind of questions. Older guys can ask questions that piss me off. You're too young. See, this is just a game. It's not the end of the world. But every question you ask is like, we should cancel the season now because we just lost. Relax. We lost the game. We're 297 and six in the Big East. So you don't think that. You should do anything to prepare your team for that. For prepare my the team for what? They just lost, and now they have to go into an NCAA tournament. So what's this game got to do with the rest? We lost the game today. We just won 70 straight. Did that have anything to do with this one? But you have four freshmen that, that aren't used to it, and you have. I'm not worried about the freshmen. We got Diana Tarazi and, and and Jessica Moore and and Ashley Battle that weren't used to this. We got a whole team that's never played this much in the Big East tournament. So you don't? Do you think it should be on the captain's shoulders to try to help them, or do you? No, think it's on my shoulders. What am I going to do to help them? This is basketball. I can't go shoot the ball for him. You know, Gino, there's always the national championship to go for. Now with more insight, the two women who brought you the game on ESPN2, Michelle Tafoya and Doris Burke. Thank you, Michelle and Doris. So the longest win streak in women's hoop history ends at 70. UConn ends up 18 wins shy of the men's mark of UCLA's record 88-game win streak. Remember, it was Digger Phelps' Notre Dame's Fighting Irish who snapped the Bruins' streak back in 74. We'll have more on streak enders later. Big East tourney action, St. John's and Notre Dame, Marcus Hatton. St. John's, everything was going down. Johnny's by 21 and worth another look. Hatton going through three defenders, 18 points. Early second half, Kyle Cuff with the hook shot. Danny Miller with the rebound. And then Hatton will knife in the cat burglar. The Johnny's up by 23. But here come the Irish. Miller, who had 18. Irish cut the lead to seven. Over a minute left, Notre Dame by five. Matt Carroll, the pull up for three that touches nothing but the bottom of the net. He had 14. Irish down two. Same score. Chris Thomas down low. Torn Francis, the rebound. The putback, he's fouled. He goes to the line. He missed the first free throw. The second one, Hatton gets the rebound and is fouled immediately. Something about Irish eyes. After hitting the first foul shot, Hatton the second one. And Matt Carroll with a chance to go coast to coast and send this one into overtime. Carroll. St. John's wins it. four straight wins. Here's Dickie B. Six players suspended. That accounts for 56% of the total scoring, 59% of the rebounding, 39% of their assists. Could Villanova do tonight what the women's team did last night? Pull off a surprise. Brandon Bowman. Oh my goodness. Two for 10 from the floor, but that one with degree of difficulty. Hoya's up early by two. Nova up by three. Derek Snowden had 12, 10 points in the first half. Nova led by three at halftime. Just over a minute to play. Hoya's up 43 38. Snowden steals the outlet. Randy Foy for three. 
Nova down a deuce. Boy had 10, under 40 seconds to go. Gerald Riley, he had 10. Georgetown improves to 15 and 13. They pick up the victory, 46-41. Meanwhile, a quick update. We back to the Big East. West Virginia and Providence. First half, Rob Sanders. Baseline, ill freaky. The reverse by the sophomore. He had 17 of 6 of 10 from the floor. Ryan Gomes off the steal. Finishes strong. He had 26 and 15. Second half, watch Sanders. And this is all about persistence. Hustle. Get up! Get up! He gets up and goes to the bucket and then finishes with two hands like his mama taught him. 73-50. This wasn't even close. Seton Hall in Miami. That's your big He's coach of the year. Lewis Orr, he deserves it. Seton Hall maybe needs a win to get in. We check the Pirates attorney, hopes meter, and it's rising as Andre Sweet gets the basket later. Andre Barrett leading the break, two on one, drops it off for John Allen. And look at the attorney, hopes meter, they're growing. Seton Hall rolling up 38-19, John Allen. He's got three, and it's a magic number. Seen all up by 16. They're turning hopes about to bust off the charts. A minute later, Andre Sweet. How sweet it is. Sugary. Looks like the hall will be dancing, but to make sure, let's check in with Digger Phelps. Perennial champ Cincinnati meeting Southern Miss in the Conference USA tourney. That's Jasper Johnson. Southern Miss up two. Southern Miss still up two. Leonard Stokes. Tough J. Ties it at 59. Cincinnati had won the last nine meetings with Southern Miss. Cincinnati down a deuce. It's Stokes again, baseline. Get in the roll, and we're tied at 61. Next possession. The go-to guy, Jasper Johnson. The three, no, but Johnson is there with a tip in. He had 21. Last chance for the Bearcats, and it'll be Chad Moore. Cincinnati now 17 and 11 and sitting on the bubble. Southern Miss moves on to face St. Louis. More from the Conference USA tourney, uh, South Florida and DePaul. And the story here, Reggie Cohn came in averaging nine points. That's his 6-3. Beats the shot clock at the half. Seth Greenberg thinks it's the end of the half. No, Seth. No, dog. No. Uh -oh. The assistant's got to grab Seth when that happens. He left the coach's box. Yeah, he gets teed up. He, of course, it's funny because his team was flowing, especially Mr. Cohn. Mama, did that man again. Cohn, 7 of 10 from the land of plenty. Seth digging the scene because his team wins. Northeast Tourney, St. Francis ran into West. Are you going to do that? I'm going to do the uh, Eastern Washington okay. Weber State game, the Big Sky Championship, and that's Chris Hester. And scream at him, kid. 28 27 at that point. Second half, under two minutes. Jermaine Boyette drives down the middle, the layup, the foul. It's 58 54. Seven seconds remain. Weber State up by three, going to the line, but a technical foul is called on the Weber State fans for throwing something on the floor. Alvin Snow. Misses the first one. So Weber State's boy at now at the line. Team up by three. He can't make the free throw. Eastern Washington going the other way. Looking for a little strange to send it in overtime. No strange. No party. Oh, yeah. There's a party. Ogden, Utah. There's a party in Ogden. But where are they going to go? Northeast Tourney. St. Francis ran into Wagner. Derek Wittenberg, the NEC Coach of the Year. Derek with the uh, pass, a strategic pass to Lorenzo Charles in the 1983 NCAA Championship as NC State with Jim Balvano shocking Houston by a deuce. Fast forward, Wagner up by seven, the NEC Player of the Year, Jermaine Hall. Later in the first, Hall had 27 points, 22 in the first half alone. Wagner's up 10 at halftime. Second half, Wagner up big. Diedrich die. He had 11. Wagner goes on to win it. Gets the automatic bid. And let's start dancing. Wittenberg going back to the tournament for the first time in 20 years. Let's look at the automatic bidders. Two more teams clinch. Weber State and Wagner. Wagner joining UNC Asheville and Troy State as first timers in the big dance. The last two times Weber State has reached the tournament, they've been a 14 seed and won each of their first round games. The latest and upset of North Carolina back to the Conference USA turning UAB in Charlotte. First half, UAB down by four. Morris Finley from the land of plenty. He had 17 points. Late first half, UAB by a nickel. Eric Bush, and you got to stop the ball. If you don't stop the ball, your feelings get hurt. Bush off the glass. Blazers up 39-34. Bush with 21. Late second half, UAB rolling. Richard Jones, Willie go round in circles. And they will, the Blazers will face Marquette in the next round.
Stay with Conference USA, Houston and Tulane. Marcus Kinzer with the steal, looking for Wayne Tinsley. Tulane up by 14 at halftime. Second half, Tulane up 12. Brandon Spawn from three, four of seven from three-point range. Tulane by 15. Still in the second half, Tulane up big. Spawn with the steal. That's playing the passing lane, isn't it? Dribbling upstream. Spawn, 16 points. Tulane wins it, 74. 52. Let's look at the brackets in Conference USA. Tulane, the only higher seed to win on Wednesday. South Florida advances to the quarters for the third straight year. South Florida, Southern Miss, UAB, all have a chance to win four games in four days to reach the NCAA tournament. St. Louis in 2000 uh, is the uh, last Conference USA team to win.